Hello, beloved friends. Welcome back to my channel. I am excited to share with you today some of the things that I would have wanted to hear myself as a new mom. I have two little girls. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, and I've been a pretty much stay-at-home mom since my first daughter was born eight years ago, almost nine. She's almost nine. In August, she will be nine, and then she will be 10, and then she'll be 30. Ah! I had postpartum depression and I didn't know it but man when people would tell me hey don't um, don't rush this you know they're gonna grow up so fast you're gonna blink and they're gonna be grown up I hated when people told me that because it made me feel like they were minimizing the pain that I felt and the and the struggle that I was going through with my little kids right I felt depressed and I felt super unequipped and inactive inadequate that's the word inadequate inadequate inad inad <laughs> I felt inadequate inadequate is that a word I think so I felt not capable of being a mother to humans okay that's what I felt like I felt like I was put in a place where I was stretched completely outside of my comfort zone in my head having a baby having kids was romantic and it had nothing to do with you know feeling terrible feelings about myself as a mother. I did not know what was coming for me. So that's what I would tell young moms right now is that it is a phase and a season and it will not, um, it will not stay this way forever. There's a light at the end of the tunnel and yes, you will blink and they will be so big and you won't be able to believe it. But if you are going through postpartum depression or if you are going through it and you're having a hard time trying to get your bearings and get, um, and get yourself gathered to understanding why it is that God gave you uh, a kid when you feel completely unequipped for the job. Um, just know that there is grace and that I understand how you feel and that you're not alone in those feelings. I think that's the first thing that I would tell myself is, yes, it does go fast. Yes, treasure those moments, but also if you're going through a hard time, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry and I wish I could hug you. Uh, I really wish I could hug you. I wish that you could feel my love to you no matter whether you have a huge support system uh, or not. Um, we all need that extra encouragement, that hug of knowing that what we're doing, it matters, right? If you're at home with your kids and you have left your job, you all of a sudden feel a complete loss of identity, of not getting a paycheck all of a sudden, not getting praise if you do a good job or not, you know, not getting uh, the bell rung if you have changed your hundredth diaper of the day. I just wanna tell you, hang on, and you're doing a wonderful job, honey. You're doing an incredible job that doesn't get much credit, doesn't get many compliments, doesn't get a paycheck, doesn't get um, a, a raise or, um, accolades and awards but i want to award you with the biggest award of all time i want to say thank you for what you're doing because mothering is oh, i think god takes this opportunity to not only give us wisdom to mother our own children but in the mothering process he mothers us in those places where we needed to get be mothered and we didn't because i know for me my story with my mother is one of uh, triumph and victory, but it didn't always begin there. My mom and I had, you know, I think a lot of mothers and daughters, they have a little bit of challenges in their relationship. Um, so my mom and I had those challenges. And when I became a mother, it was like some parts of me were like, Where's my mommy? I want my mommy. I want her to be the mommy of my children, no, not me. I can't do this by myself, right? But I didn't have her. My mom lives in Mexico. So I didn't have her physically here and it was very challenging for me to not have that support. But in some other areas, I don't wanna be anything like my mother in this regard, right? I, I wanna be different from the way that she chose to mother me in this area of my life. So there were these big two contrasting feelings of, I want my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to be nothing like my mommy in this scenario or situation. Mamita, te amo, I love you. There is nothing more precious than what you have done for me and I am so grateful for my mother, everything, all parts of her, the weaknesses and her strengths. For me as a person, my mom was the best fit for my life and that's what I want to say to you as well. The second thing that I would tell myself 
when I was a new mom is that God made no mistake in pairing you with your child. Your child needs your weaknesses and your strengths. So whenever you hear that little blah, 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 the little voice that tells you you're not enough, you're not doing well, you're not doing things correctly, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not enough, you're not enough, no, uh, uh, uh. it should be like a rap song, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not enough, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not enough. Well, I wanna tell you, Ooh, that sounded like a weird chicken. I thought that was gonna sound like, like a, you know, hip hop track. Sounded like a crazy pluckety chicken. I want to tell you, let's erase that record. You are enough. God made no mistake in placing your child with you. And your child needs your weaknesses and your strengths. You being a good mom, you get to decide what that means. You know, I think we have to be responsible and we have to look at ourselves in the mirror. If you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, really, I am giving it the best that I can. I am showing up for my child. I am trying my best. I think that's all we can do, right? There's just so much that tells us, this is how you raise a child. This is what you need to do. This is what you gotta be doing. You have to put them in all these activities. And if they, um, are happy, then you're a good mom. If they are getting good grades, then you're a good mom. If they are following God, then you're a good mom. But those are all outside circumstances that you cannot control and you don't have that much control over your child's life. You are there to give your child the best that you can be, right? If you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am showing up for my kid, I think that you are enough. There are instances where I believe that there's something going on with a parent that they're really not truly showing up. And you know if that's, if that's you, if you are not able or capable of caring for your kid, I wanna, I wanna also say to that that I can relate to that because there was a, there was, <laughs> there was a season in my life where I felt like I wasn't capable of caring for my children, right? And God totally covered me in that in that time and covered me with people to help me and covered me with my husband um, but I know the depths of pain that can bring you to question whether or not you're a good fit for your child I understand that feeling of feeling completely frustrated because you you can kind of figure yourself out but now you add a little tiny human to the equation and you're just you have no clue no clue on how to do this because either you want to correct some things that were in your past or you are afraid that you're gonna bring this child into a life where you know you are suffering so you're like man how can I even give my kid hope if I don't feel hope so this is my prayer to you young young uh, mother my prayer to you is that you would seek God and that is the thing that I would continue to tell myself over and over again is maybe I'm not equipped for my children. I'm not equipped to be their mother. But God, God is equipped and he has all the wisdom and knowledge. And I can go in prayer to God and ask him to show me how to how to care for my kids, show me how to love them, show me how to encourage them, show me how to how to discipline them in a way that really encourages them to make the best choices for their life. Um, he's gonna show me how to give them grace and provide them the unconditional love that they need to be able to, one, believe in Jesus Christ and believe in his grace. Because if I'm not being an example of the love of Christ and I'm professing to be a Christian, then they're gonna, they're not, I'm never gonna be perfect like Jesus, I know that. But I tell my kids, I am a person and I'm gonna make lots of mistakes and I'm so sorry when I fail you. And that is exactly the reason why I love Jesus is because I can go to him when I am broken, when someone has hurt me or I disappoint you, I can go to God for healing and to ask him to help you. I tell my kids this. I think it's important to be very vulnerable with our children because I think in vulnerability, of ourselves, we release them of this expectation that we should be the parent that knows it all or that has it all together because when they grow up, they will start to want to be like us, right? I don't want my girls to grow up and think that they have to be perfect or that to be a good Christian, it means, or a good mom, it means that you have it all together because in the end, they won't 
because I know for me, I've grown up and the more I grow up, it, the less I know. The more I see God, the more I get undone, the more I feel vulnerable and weak and, and not equipped, right? The more I grow up, the more I understand my intense need for Christ. And I believe that they're in their life when they go and they suffer and they hit roadblocks and they hit difficulty i want them to look back and remember a time when their mother said hey this is why i love jesus is because i don't know much but i do know a savior i do know jesus and he helps me in times of weakness and in need so don't be afraid to be vulnerable with your children don't be afraid to show them when you're hurting and who comforts you because they are going to start to know the ability to to seek god in those moments of weakness um i think some of the most precious moments i've ever had with my children have been moments of vulnerability i just had one recently where I had an episode of PTSD um, around both of my girls. And before, when I would get them, you know, they were little, so they didn't notice much. Uh, and this time around, they're a little bigger. And my eight-year-old asked me, she goes, Mommy, what's wrong? Are you okay? And I told her, I said, Honey, I'm having a little bit of a an episode called PTSD and she's like what is that mommy so I'm trying to explain to her you know what it is and where it's from and um, how God has been such a crucial piece to my healing and to the anchoring of my soul when I do go through episodes of PTSD and she looks right at me and she holds my little hand and she says mommy I understand how you feel it feels really terrible to feel scared um, I'm gonna pray for you and she began to pray for me an eight-year-old praying for her old 35-year-old mama was such a humbling moment, but that is where God showed me it's important to teach our children that when they go through it, what they cling to is going to matter the most. So I think for me as a mother, the most important thing that somebody told me was to use every failure of mine, which is a lot, Pretty much every day there's something that I fail at, um, whether it be in my home with my husband, myself, or my kids. Um, they said, let every failure, let every source of shame or uh, possibility of condemnation be a place where you can shed light into the gospel of Christ to your kids. Let every moment be a teachable moment of why you truly love Jesus. And I think that that's what I would impart onto you and respectfully and lovingly uh, offer to you, my beloved dear new mom, is that you would take every weakness that you think you have that might be ruining your kids and that you would just place it at the feet of Jesus and watch what he does with your vulnerability and 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 in your weakness, he will become strong. So take heart what you're doing of being a mother of mothering a child is huge it has a huge impact and what you're doing is something that is going to be known generation after generation after generation you will leave a legacy whether or not you choose the legacy that's up to you what legacy you want to leave will it be of brokenness and fear and doubt and unbelief or will it be a legacy of a mom who acknowledges that maybe you don't have it all together right maybe you don't maybe you are afraid at some point um, but you love Jesus and you will pray to him and you will get your strength from him and you will pray and be on your knees when you don't know what else to do with your kids be on your knees more than you are in your head about your children when they see you doing it they're gonna do it your kids are gonna do what you do not what you say that would be my last thing for me to, to encourage you with your kids are gonna do what you do and not what you say. We're not gonna get it perfectly. We're not gonna get it all right. But what you can do is just show an example of a person who is vulnerable enough to humble herself before the Lord and ask that he would give you guidance and, and wisdom to know how to shepherd and how to raise your young ones. I pray that you just began to melt in the love of Jesus and to understand that you're enough, okay? You're enough as a mom, you're enough as a woman, you're enough as a wife. And any condemnation, any whisper of the enemy that says otherwise, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. 
Okay, I love you so much. I'll talk to you next week.